I heard these words of the Buddha one time when he was staying in Savati in the eastern park with many well-known and accomplished disciples including Sariputta, Mahamogallana, Mahakashapa, Mahakachayana, Mahakotita, Mahakapina, Mahakunda, Anurudha, Revata, and Ananda. The senior bhikkhus in the community were diligently instructing bhikkhus who were new to the practice. Some instructing ten students, some twenty, some thirty, and some forty. And in this way, the bhikkhus new to the practice gradually made great progress. That night, the moon was full, and the Pavarana ceremony was held to mark the end of the rainy season retreat. Lord Buddha, the Awakened One, was sitting in the open air, and his disciples were gathered around him. After looking over the assembly, he began to speak. O oh, bhikkhus, I am pleased to observe the fruit you have attained in your practice. Yet I know you can make even more progress. What you have not yet attained, you can attain. What you have not yet realized, you can realize perfectly. To encourage your efforts, I will stay here until the next full moon day. When they heard that the Lord Buddha was going to stay at Savati for another month, bhikkhus throughout the country began traveling there to study with him. The senior bhikkhus continued teaching bhikkhus new to the practice even more ardently. Some were instructing ten bhikkhus, some twenty, some thirty, and some forty. With this help, the newer bhikkhus were able, little by little, to continue their progress in understanding. When the next full moon day arrived, the Buddha, seated under the open sky, looked over the assembly of bhikkhus and began to speak. O oh, bhikkhus, our community is pure and good. At its heart, it is without useless and boastful talk, and therefore, it deserves to receive offerings and be considered a field of merit. Such a community is rare, and any pilgrim who seeks it, no matter how far he must travel, will find it worthy. O oh, bhikkhus, there are bhikkhus in this assembly who have realized the fruit of arahatship, destroyed every root of affliction, laid aside every burden, and attained right understanding and emancipation. There are also bhikkhus who have cut off the first five internal formations and realized the fruit of never returning to the cycle of birth and death. There are those who have thrown off the first three internal formations and realized the fruit of returning once more. They have cut off the roots of greed, hatred, and ignorance, and will only need to return to the cycle of birth and death one more time. There are those who have thrown off the three internal formations and attained the fruit of stream enterer coursing steadily to the awakened state. There are those who practice the four establishments of mindfulness. There are those who practice the four right efforts and those who practice the four bases of success. There are those who practice the five faculties, those who practice the five powers, those who practice the seven factors of awakening, 
and those who practice the Noble Eightfold Path. There are those who practice loving-kindness, those who practice compassion, those who practice joy, and those who practice equanimity. There are those who practice the Nine Contemplations, and those who practice the observation of impermanence. There are also bhikkhus who are already practicing full awareness of breathing. O oh, bhikkhus, the method of being fully aware of breathing, if developed and practiced continuously, will have great rewards and bring great advantages. It will lead to success in practicing the four establishments of mindfulness. If the method of the four establishments of mindfulness is developed and practiced continuously, it will lead to success in the practice of the seven factors of awakening. The seven factors of awakening, if developed and practiced continuously, will give rise to understanding and liberation of the mind. What is the way to develop and practice continuously the method of full awareness of breathing so that the practice will be rewarding and offer great benefit? It is like this, bhikkhus. The practitioner goes into the forest or to the foot of a tree or to any deserted place, sits stably in the lotus position, holding his body quite straight and practices like this. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. Breathing in a long breath, I know I am breathing in a long breath. Breathing out a long breath, I know I am breathing out a long breath. Breathing in a short breath, I know I am breathing in a short breath. Breathing out a short breath, I know I am breathing out a short breath. Breathing in, I am aware of my whole body. Breathing out, I am aware of my whole body. He practices like this. Breathing in, I calm my whole body. Breathing out, I calm my whole body. He practices like this. Breathing in, I feel joyful. Breathing out, I feel joyful. He practices like this. Breathing in, I feel happy. Breathing out, I feel happy. He practices like this. Breathing in, I am aware of my mental formations. Breathing out, I am aware of my mental formations. He practices like this. Breathing in, I calm my mental formations. Breathing out, I calm my mental formations. He practices like this. Breathing in, I am aware of my mind. Breathing out, I am aware of my mind. He practices like this. Breathing in, I make my mind happy. Breathing out, I make my mind happy. He practices like this. Breathing in, I concentrate my mind. Breathing out, I concentrate my mind. He practices like this. 
Breathing in, I liberate my mind. Breathing out, I liberate my mind. Keep practices like this. Breathing in, I observe the impermanent nature of all dharmas. Breathing out, I observe the impermanent nature of all dharmas. He practices like this. Breathing in, I observe the disappearance of desire. Breathing out, I observe the disappearance of desire. He practices like this. Breathing in, I observe cessation. Breathing out, I observe cessation. He practices like this. Breathing in, I observe letting go. Breathing out, I observe letting go. He practices like this. The full awareness of breathing, if developed and practiced continuously according to these instructions, will be rewarding and of great benefit. In what way does one develop and continuously practice the full awareness of breathing in order to succeed in the practice of the four establishments of mindfulness? When the practitioner breathes in or out a long or short breath, aware of his breath or his whole body, or aware that he is making his whole body calm and at peace, he abides peacefully in the observation of the body in the body, persevering, fully awake, clearly understanding his state, gone beyond all attachment and aversion to this life, these exercises of breathing with full awareness belong to the first establishment of mindfulness, the body. When the practitioner breathes in or out, aware of joy or happiness, aware of the mental formations, or to make the mental formations peaceful, he abides peacefully in the observation of the feelings in the feelings, persevering, fully awake, clearly understanding his state, gone beyond all attachment and aversion to this life. These exercises of breathing with full awareness belong to the second establishment of mindfulness, the feelings. When the practitioner breathes in or out with the awareness of the mind, or to make the mind happy, to collect the mind in concentration, or to free and liberate the mind. He abides peacefully in the observation of the mind in the mind, persevering, fully awake, clearly understanding his state, gone beyond all attachment and aversion to this life. These exercises of breathing with full awareness belong to the third establishment of mindfulness, the mind. Without full awareness of breathing, there can be no development of meditative stability and understanding. When the practitioner breathes in or breathes out and contemplates the essential impermanence or the essential disappearance of desire or cessation or letting go, he abides peacefully in the observation of the objects of mind in the objects of mind, persevering, fully awake, clearly understanding his state, gone beyond all attachment and aversion to this life. These exercises of breathing with full awareness belong to the fourth establishment of mindfulness, the objects of mind. The practice of full awareness of breathing, if developed and practiced continuously, will lead to perfect accomplishment 
of the four establishments of mindfulness. Moreover, if they are developed and continuously practiced, the four establishments of mindfulness will lead to perfect abiding in the seven factors of awakening. How is this so? When the practitioner abides in the practice of observing the body in the body, the feelings in the feelings, the mind in the mind, and the objects of mind in the objects of mind, diligent, fully awake, clearly understanding his state, gone beyond all attachment and aversion to this life. At that point, mindfulness is maintained in him in a sustained and steadfast way, and he will attain the first factor of awakening, namely, mindfulness. He cultivates it, and in time, it comes to fulfillment. When the practitioner abides in mindfulness, and he can investigate and examine every object of mind that arises, then the second factor of awakening will be born and developed in him, the factor of investigating dharmas. He cultivates it, and in time it comes to fulfillment. When the practitioner abides in the observation and examination of every dharma, in a sustained, diligent, and steadfast way. The third factor of awakening will be born and developed in him, the factor of energy. He cultivates it, and in time, it comes to fulfillment. When the practitioner abides in the practice of diligence, in a sustained and steadfast way, the fourth factor of awakening will be born and developed in him, the factor of joy. He cultivates it, and in time it comes to fulfillment. When the practitioner can abide in the state of joy, he will feel his body and mind light and at peace. At this point, the fifth factor of awakening will be born and developed in him, the factor of ease. He cultivates it, and in time, it comes to fulfillment. When both body and mind are at ease, the practitioner can easily enter into concentration. At this point, the sixth factor of awakening will be born and developed in him, the factor of concentration. He cultivates it, and in time, it comes to fulfillment. When the practitioner is truly abiding in concentration, he will cease discriminating and comparing. At this point, the seventh factor of awakening will be born and developed in him, the factor of equanimity. He cultivates it, and in time, it comes to fulfillment. This is how the four establishments of mindfulness if developed and practiced continuously, will lead to perfect abiding in the seven factors of awakening. How will the seven factors of awakening, if developed and practiced continuously, lead to the accomplishment of true understanding and complete liberation? The practitioner cultivates the seven factors of awakening, living in quiet seclusion, meditating diligently on the desireless and no birth, no death nature of all things in order to perfect the ability of letting go. That is how the cultivation and development of the seven factors of awakening will lead to the accomplishment of true understanding and liberation. This is what the Lord, the Awakened One, said and everyone in the assembly felt delight at having heard his teachings. Anapanasati Sutta, Majima Nikaya 118, translated from the Pali.